Hello World. I'm Robin Catling, and this is Right On. Join me on my author journey as I delve into the craft of writing with tips, tools, and lessons learned the hard way so you don't have to. Editing Tips for Creative Writing It seems everyone teaches creative writing these days, but where are the editing tips? We're all led to believe that creative writing flows effortlessly from our fingertips in an unbroken stream of consciousness. It doesn't. Good writing is hard work. Good finished writing is down to good, solid editing. Any text can be improved by several rounds of rereading and re-editing, cutting and honing until the best possible version is achieved. But how do you edit, exactly? This is my basic editing toolset. Reading in reverse breaks down our natural tendency to read what we expect and not what is actually on the page. All those misspellings and typos. It's not much use for content, context and meaning, but it will cover the mechanical accuracy of the text. This might fall under proofreading more than editing, but it does make the editing process more effective by taking out all the mechanical glitches. Distance. Put your draft aside, if only overnight, preferably for a few days or a couple of weeks. Reread it with fresh eyes another time. It's amazing what a little distance does when you return to a text you were immensely satisfied with, only to find a half-completed, garbled mess. Rewrite, simplify, sharpen. Brevity. Unless you're writing an academic paper or a self-help text, that teaching or PowerPoint rule of tell them what you're about to say, say it, then tell them what you said, that seldom applies. At best it's repetition, at worst it looks like amateur hour. Punch it out clearly, first time, then move on. Reading aloud can reveal those clunky, convoluted and unclear passages that seemed so clear on the pad or on the screen. You may not have the time to read the entire 40, 50, 60,000 word manuscript, but you can spot those difficult, long passages with too many clauses and not enough commas or full stops. Cut, cut, cut. Brevity doesn't come easily to most writers. Good, tight, concise and precise text usually comes from ruthless cutting of early, wordy and abstruse drafts. For example, cut the word abstruse. Value add. If a word, clause or passage doesn't add any value in terms of meaning, context, backstory or relevance, cut it. There has to be a value, or a payoff, if not immediately, then as a plant for several pages or chapters time. Otherwise, cut it. Justify. Like value add above, you have to justify why that word or passage is there. Does it make a contribution? Does it fit the subject, the genre and the tone of the piece? Is it worth the payoff later on? Is a joke a lengthy description or a brutal act of violence in keeping with the piece? Is it an unnecessary digression or distraction? If so, cut. Pretentious, parodic or technical language. Is your use of these appropriate for the piece? For parody, satire, comedy or genre pieces such as science fiction, military adventures, medical or legal thrillers, all that technical language may well be in which case you have to be thoroughly grounded in research or completely plausible in your speculation. Will the reader get it? Will they understand it? Is there language that needs to be simplified, explained or rewritten in plain English? Remember, few readers relish a show-off. New readers coming to you fresh may switch off. Audience appropriate. Sex, violence and profanity may be part of the human experience, but hopefully not if you're in the reception class learning to read about Jimmy and Joni. Similarly, the train spotting crowd won't appreciate a Jimmy and Joni text, gosh darn it. Finally, don't be afraid to kill your children. We don't mean that literally. No minors should be harmed in the process of your editing. What this means is recognizing your little darling phrases, characters or scenes that you become inordinately proud of, but which are actually overblown, out of place or unbalance the rest of the piece. Cut them or cut them down to size. You may see a literary icon, others will see a caricature, cartoon, cutout, or a honking great distraction that takes them out of the text that they've willingly dived into. All of this editing is before we even begin to look at aspects of style and composition, which is the topic of a future post. That's all for this time. Thanks for stopping by. You can like and subscribe to the channel for more tips, or visit robincatling.info to check out the blog.